Alright, it is time for another video. I suppose I should fix myself to, to record one of these. <laughs> so, well, the F1's been ticking over. This is very, uh, very interesting watching the meanderings of the F1. Charlie Leclerc's home win was engineered. If you're wondering where the deets are, it's that science wasn't put to the back of the grid. Would it have changed anything? I don't know. But, well, F1 seems to be covering their bases nowadays, allegedly. This is all alleged. And the Norris situation. Lando Norris picking up his maiden win at Miami. The whole safety car. <clears throat> well, is it a kerfuffle? It doesn't really seem like people caught what happened, but I don't really blame them because, well, they were distracted with replays on the global feed. So, uh, if, I mean, would it change anything? There's Mandem who are, no doubt, watching the season with the F1 TV package, the full thing, with the drivers and all, <laughs> with, with, with the onboards and all, and they didn't catch it, what happened there with the safety car at the Miami Grand Prix. And they, firstly, there's the timing of when the safety car was released. Dubious. Then there was... The field not being let past the safety car after after it became obvious that Norris had gotten ahead of the safety car. Also dubious. For a whole lap, they were showing replays of the crash for the whole lap, so I suppose, well... Well, it is what it is. <laughs> it wouldn't have mattered anyway. Well, I pondered to myself if they would have had to do that to get Norris over the line and not with Max Millions with Max Millions' damaged car, as it were. I wonder if they really had to do that, but, well, Lando Norris himself probably has a complex when it comes to overtaking Max Millian Verstappen, so it is what it is. But, well, these things are happening in the F1, and, well, I've gotten back into rugby, as I'm liable to do, being the South African that I am. I've gotten back into the rugby. I watched Chasing the Sun too. brilliant thing, brilliant little documentary. I do suggest watching it. I'm not sure how people abroad can get it, but whatever. I do suggest watching it. <laughs> Maybe you can psych yourself up by watching the uh, 97 British and Irish Lions documentary, although I, I still consider that one better than Chasing the Sun 2. But anyway, it's Chasing the Sun 1 and Chasing the Sun 2. You can get it as a package. It's a good It's a good watch anyway. I'm, I'm re-watching it too many times currently. But well... Something became really apparent when I started watching some rugby again. And it was that F1 is lacking authenticity. It's really lacking authenticity. You see, a thing like uh, a sport like rugby has checks and balances to keep it authentic, such as the such as the scrum, such as simply the physicality of the game. These things keep it authentic. Combat sports, likewise, are kept authentic because it's, it's combat, obviously. So, these things are kept authentic through that. <clears throat> yes, there might be... There might be some fixing that goes on here and there, but, well, sometimes they can't, they can't do the fixing. <laughs> right? Sometimes, more times than not, quite frankly, they just cannot do the fixing in the combat sports. I sure they might put an MK acid up there and the MK acid get whopped by some fucking teenager coming out of Brazil who knows how to fight who the fuck knows. These things could happen. But anyway. All these combat sports, your NFL as well. And your contact sports, I should say. All your combat sports and your contact sports. These things have checks and balances to maintain their authenticity. F1 does not have these checks and balances. And the other sports are suffering as well, your football and your NBA and what have you. They're also struggling for authenticity right now. You see, watching Chasing the Sun 2, and that, that <laughs> I, I thought to myself while watching it, why can't F1 do something like this? Why can't they capture something like that? And then I thought to myself, wait, they're doing Drive to Survive. Everyone... I hate Strive to Survive, quite frankly, let's just be frank about it. More people dislike it than like it, but whatever, it's still going to make money. And they've got Drive to Survive going, and if you're a seasoned F1 viewer, fan, what have you, whatever you want to call yourself, 
The drive to survive doesn't land for you. It just doesn't land. It lacks the authenticity to land. All the access, none of the authenticity. And of course, there's rugby documentaries coming out on the Netflix and what have you, the Six Nations documentary, whatever they call it there. And those documentaries struggle to be authentic because they don't provide the access. It's a different thing, right? Chasing the Sun and Chasing the Sun 2, you get access. You get access to the locker room, what's going on in there. The British and Irish Lions tour, 97 documentary tour. What, what is that? What is that? What is that thing called? I forget it. It's not chasing the lions. It can't be that. But anyway, that documentary, you get the access. You get the authenticity. F1 tries to provide us the access with Drive to Survive. And you get none of the authenticity. Mind you, they, they fuck themselves up with the editing decisions that they do. But whatever. <laughs> whatever. You could survive some poor editing if the thing was authentic at the end of the day. And so I find myself in a quandary. How am I supposed to talk about F1 if the thing is inauthentic? I don't necessarily want to be the guy that's... I mean, there's, there's more... There's always... It's not that there's more bad to point out than good in F1. It's just that there's only bad to point out. I try to talk about how I like the cars. But it's not like it's going to make other mandem like the cars. The other mandem, they're not, they're not going to like the current formula. It is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. I think F1 would be well served by simply sticking with current formula until... Well, say current formula, they might do something with the engines, but... The shape of the cars aerodynamically and with the ground effect situation. If I were in charge, which I'm not, I would suggest sticking with these regulations till something like 2032, if you could. But that's never going to happen. That's never going to happen. They're fixing up some new thing. The 2026 regulation has been announced. Uh, they're putting on the active aero now. <laughs> Junior active aero, I should call it. But well, <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm looking at the, these new regulations as well. I'm thinking to myself, oh, so if they want, you know, they'll just tell the driver X mode is being, this is the X mode, the attack mode for the arrow is being activated and oh, it's not being activated. He's stuck, brother. The makers have decided that you're going to be stuck here for the, for a duration in the Grand Prix, maybe the whole Grand Prix. We'll see what happens when 2026 rolls around. Giving FOM and the apparatus more tools to fix results. But anyway. <laughs> anyway. And they can do it much more covertly. But who knows? Maybe maybe the active error will, will be notable. It will be observable. From TV, well, even from the stands, without having to have knowledge, like, oh my God, is that wing flattening down? What's going on? But I, I doubt it's gonna be anything like that. What did they say? Hundred millimeters or something? Uh, Ten centimeter difference? I'm not even sure on that. It might be nanometers, but I think that's a different. That's relating to a different measurements on the car. But anyway. Anyway. I wanted to make this video just to. Speak about how F1 is lacking authenticity right now. It really is. And it's been lacking authenticity since 2021, of course. It's been lacking authenticity since. And, well, if you have eyes to see, it's not really bothered about recovering that authenticity. Anyway. Anyway, various other things been cooking over in the F1. The Newey situation, as it were. Ooh, the Newey sweepstakes are up. There's no point talking about Newey until something concrete actually happens. There's no point talking about him because he could quite literally do anything. Right? He's just as likely to go retire on a boat <laughs> as he is to design another fucking racing car. So there's no point talking about whatever the fuck he's going to do. Everyone's making him absurd offers right now just to try get him to rack his brains on another car just one last time. But anyway, 
Anyway, interestingly, there is a incoming exodus of personnel from Red Bull over this whole Spice Boy Horner situation. So we'll see what happens. Zach Brown. Zach Brown done the whistleblower thing and said, oh, we're getting applications from Red Bull folks over here. Did that during the Miami Grand Prix, I believe. But anyway, that one's definitely going to tick over for most of the season. I'm surprised the Spice Boy won a thing. You see? <laughs> I shouldn't even have to be worrying about Spice Boy and his, and his extracurricular affairs over here. I shouldn't have to be. That's not, that's not, how has this gotten into F1? F1 already has problems with, one, its integrity, now I'm pointing out its authenticity. And then you've got Spice Boy on the side doing his t- <laughs> Oh my days. But Spice Boy's not the only one, there's many men doing that. They just know where to draw the line when interacting with civilians or and not interacting with uh, fucking MK assets but anyway anyway that's all alleged this whole video should be alleged gotta make sure I cover my ass so fucking FOM done ooh we're gonna shoot this nigga now but anyway <laughs> <laughs> funny, funny thing about the N word, by the way, this whole Drake Kendrick situation. Who's allowed to say the N word? Who knows? Who knows, right? That's for that's for a later day. But anyway, that should be the video. Yeah, that should be the video. There are some other things I'll talk about on another day. Hopefully, I got my full heart within. But anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Peace.